my dad. Far from it. Why am I, I sir? You've never used them before. It's not going to go like a download because, honestly, if, if I could just jack people in like they did in The Matrix, that would be great. But this presentation is being refined, but I want to do it now for you guys, and we'll see where this goes. Cool. This really is about why do your eyes hurt because you've never used them before. As far as rabbit holes, the money rabbit hole is one of the biggest ones, so let's hit people where they live. This is a normal deposit slip from Bank of America. If you see on the side here, it says that checks and other items are received for deposit subject to the provisions of the Uniform Commercial Code and any applicable collection agreements. Hmm. People, I would say that 99.99% of people have never even read this language on their deposit slip and know that this is part of it. In addition to that, once they've even read this, they still don't go read the Uniform Commercial Code and they don't know what the applicable collection agreements are. So therefore, how much do you know about this contract if you don't read these things? This is a contract. It's a deposit ticket. Yes, it's part of the contract. Now, as far as the account itself, now this is the number, and people say, well, that's my account number. No, it's not your account number. It's their account number. They're the ones that assign it. If you go read your account holder agreement, like one with Wells Fargo, it tells you in here that the bank may accept and act on any legal process it believes is valid, whether served in person or by mail, fax, or at any bank location, and that the bank will not notify you of a grand jury subpoena affecting your account. And it may, as its sole discretion, close your account at any time. If you don't believe this is true, then here is an actual account holder agreement. This is scanned in. This is one from Bank of America, and it says that the agreement and the deposit relationship do not create a fiduciary, quasi-fiduciary, or special relationship between us. We owe you only the duty of ordinary care, and we are the ones defining what ordinary care is. Hmm. Our deposit relationship with you is that of debtor and creditor. Now, if you don't understand who's who, let's see who can change the contract. Changes to this contract, we may change this agreement at any time. We may add new terms and conditions. We may delete and amend these existing terms and conditions. We may add new accounts and services or discontinue existing accounts and services. We may convert your existing accounts and services into new accounts and services. In other words, the creditor can do what they want to. The debtor has no rights. In this case, that would mean the bank is the creditor. Your relationship with the bank is that of debtor. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? You could say your relationship with the bank is that of debtor. Wow. Now, where does this show up? In Title 12 of their code, in Section 90, where it says deposits of public money and financial agents of the government, all national banking associations designated for that purpose by the Secretary of Treasury shall be depositories of public money under such regulations may be prescribed by the Secretary. And they also may be employed as financial agents of the government and they shall perform all such reasonable duties as depositories of public money and financial agents of the government. What this means is every time you walk into a bank, you walk into a federal agency, everyone in there is a federal employee, including you, because you're operating their account. Now, if you think you can protect assets based on this knowledge, how are you going to do it? Oh, I know most people are going to go hire an attorney. Let's see what happens when you hire an attorney. This is Corpus Juris Secundum, volume number 7, as section 4. It says that an attorney has a dual position, which imposes dual obligations. His first duty is to the courts and to the public, not to you, the client. And the clients are also called wards of the court because he's an officer of the court. And we know that in Black's Law Dictionary, that wards of the court are defined as an infant or a person of unsound mind. Which one are you? Unsound mind is also defined in Section 1 of their code, or Title 1, Chapter 1, Section 1. The very first definition in the U.S. Code is the word insane, insane person, and lunatic shall include every idiot, lunatic, insane person, or person non compos mentos, meaning a ward of the court, not competent to handle your affairs. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. You can see it when you look out your window. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. 
And since you're not competent to handle your affairs and you have to be taken care of, you're a ward of the court, you're a child, then you can't own anything. So therefore, in 1933, on April 17th, they passed Senate Resolution Number 62 and said all ownership of property is in the state. An individual so-called ownership is by virtue of the government, i.e. law amounting to mere user. You get to use the government's property. 